A psychopath is born, but a sociopath is made. Makima, as a character, makes it a bit complicated to differentiate between the two because we're not really given a backstory to her. However, after Denji defeats her and she reincarnates as Nayuta, Kishibe says that maybe under Denji's watch and not the government, she would turn out better. This would imply that Makima is a product of her environment and not her nature. Although this is not a certainty, due to this I will be explaining how and why Makima is the perfect representation of a psychopath. Let's not misconstrue the overlying theme though. Psychopath and sociopath are not the terminologies used during a diagnosis given to a person. Instead, they fall under the category of antisocial personality disorder. Makima, if she were real, would have an antisocial personality disorder. What gives this away so easily is that people with control issues normally fall into the category of personality disorders. Makima being the control devil can't help the way she is and the powers that she has. Everything in her nature points in the direction of a psychopath. Her mannerisms, her actions, and even her ideals. So, how does a psychopath act? Do you think you'd be able to pick one out amongst the group? No, probably not. This is because a psychopath will act and talk much like you or me. However, for someone trained in behavior analysis, it would probably be an easier job. A psychopath, by definition, is incapable of remorse and empathy. This is well represented in Makima, starting with just her facial expressions. Throughout the manga, Makima's face only shows two expressions. Her most common expression is neutral. Looking at Makima gives a very cold feeling because it's hard to read what emotion she's feeling. But that's the point. Makima isn't feeling anything. She's not feeling anything at all. Her neutral expression is a giveaway to how she really feels about everything. And the feeling is nothing. Makima is unfazed by even the worst of moments. There's never a frown or a scold on her face. When she gives commands, when she sees others die, and even when fighting to the death with Denji. That same neutral expression remains because she lacks any sort of remorse. However, this does not mean Makima does not feel joy. She most certainly does. This is her second and less common expression, a smile of joy. Now this would seem out of place for a psychopath, but let's take into account the times that she does smile. Makima smiles when manipulating or hurting others. Now, it might not be obvious to the characters or for the first time readers, but all of Makima's smiles are for show. From the first time she met Denji and saw chainsaws, she smiled at him in manipulation. A smile represents someone that is warm and trustable and that's why she does it when she otherwise just feels neutral. Makima feels true joy in the pain of others. These moments are her real smile. This includes when she kills Reize and when she sees Denji's sorrow when killing power. Now the next and more subtle manner of her psychopathy is her stance. Whenever we see Makima standing, she looks powerful. But let me be more specific than that. There are moments in the manga where Makima will stand with her hands behind her back. This is a stance of confidence. Humans are the only animals that have their torso exposed. This is why when threatened, we kind of close up and try to protect our vital areas. Someone that stands with their hands behind their back are displaying comfort, confidence, and power. They believe themselves to be secure, and in Makima's case, it's because she feels above all others. So now, we can move on. While it isn't true that all or even half of psychopaths are evil criminals, people with antisocial personality disorder are far more likely to commit crime. They do not feel remorse, so what exactly is stopping them from doing what they want? This often leads into situations of the psychopath taking advantage of others, using them as a means to their goal, no matter who it is. Makima finds pleasure in manipulation, but the manipulation has a goal, and therefore the point of said manipulation. There isn't a single character that isn't manipulated by Makima. Angel, the Prime Minister, and most clearly Denji. Angel is ripped away from the one he loved. The Prime Minister sacrificed the lives of Japanese citizens, and Denji was in love with her. These are things Makima was willing to trample on as long as she knew there was some use to these people. Well, why do psychopaths do this? This is done because they do not care about how it will affect you, but instead how it will benefit them. It is the game of life, and in their mind, you're losing. Makima, as the control devil, manipulates quite a lot. The perfect example of her manipulation was all the way back in chapter 12. This is when her manipulation is finally shown for what it is. 
Makima is giving Denji advice on how to make certain uh, scenarios feel better. Denji gets nervous and falls back off her seat from touching her boobs. In this moment, she knew she had Denji in her control. She asks him to kill the gun devil for her as a favor. From then forward, the story unfolds all based on that one moment of manipulation. While these actions do land most psychopaths in jail, the other portion of psychopaths land positions of power. They are more suited for jobs that can negatively impact others because they just don't care about them. And this is where Makima lies. While not in the highest position, she commands several divisions among the devil hunters. In chapter 27, Makima used criminals on death row as sacrifices to kill her enemies, and all she did was ask for them. In chapter 33, Makima speaks with a Yakuza boss, and she reveals that she took an eyeball out of the family members of everyone in the room. Again, she just had the authority to get it done, with no empathy to who is gonna hurt down the road. This is where things get a little more complicated. Psychopaths are not necessarily known for their radical beliefs, it's their actions that speak louder. But when those people gain positions of powers, and they are very likely to as we discussed, that's when their belief system comes into play and can be more of a concern. Take some of the world's greatest atrocities done by man. If they were led by one man and that one man's beliefs, you can probably bet money on them having ASPD. Hitler or even Genghis Khan could have had ASPD. These beliefs can be radical and often seek to gain them something, mostly power. So what are Makima's beliefs? Makima wants to change the world. She wants to defeat and control Chainsaw Man so that with his powers she can eradicate hunger, death, war, diseases, bad movies. And all of that sounds honorable, right? Why would anyone stand in her way of bringing peace and equality to the world? Well, that's because her peace and equality is just a rung below her, where Makima reigns supreme. This ties in perfectly into the next fact. Often a person with ASPD, they may also suffer from narcissistic personality disorder. These two can often coincide with each other, making a person all that more dangerous if they do not seek help. I believe Makima is, in fact, at least partially narcissistic. Think back on what I said about her posture. She's definitely a confident person among humans and devils. She clearly thinks highly of herself to be able to control others. Makima's powers literally require her to believe she is above an individual if she wants to control them. She doesn't actually have to be better than them, just believe that she is. With that power alone, she is able to control all human beings and several devils. Makima equates all humans to dogs, this being inferior life forms and in her perfect world, she is not living peacefully among everyone, she is above everyone because she has to be to maintain that power. Makima is kind of speculated to have wished that she could be equals with others, but in the end she simply couldn't see the world that way. Now I know there could be some contention to this due to the end of the manga, where Kishibe entrusted Makima's reincarnation, Nayuta, to Denji. Kishibe tells Denji that maybe growing up with him will change her from who she was. However, I believe Makima, in her very nature, has to feel above everyone to be who she is, the control devil. For this reason alone, I would have to say Makima is the perfect psychopath. 